Nothing greater than God's presence. Just think of what it's going to be when you enter his presence. Eternal presence, forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, we are in a great transition, and there is a, a renewing of a, a new reality coming. In fact, we've stepped in it already. God is beginning to remove, replace, and restore in all areas. Um, and because of this new refreshing reality that we're entering, you know, the Bible says that anyone who's in Christ is a new creation. Old things pass away and all things become new. And that's what's happening now. It's manifested, not only spiritually, but physically. But I believe we're entering a time where, man, you, need, you, <laughs> you just say Jesus and things are going to manifest. You won't have to gather big play, wherever you, boom. I believe that there's going to be that release of the second and early rain and the second of mantle. I believe that that's happening now. We've entered this new refreshing reality, and God is releasing it. In this refreshing reality, we are entering the final harvest, the greatest final harvest of time. And, and, and in this, I believe will be a seven-year period. And, and in this seven-year period, <clears throat> there's going to be Good, great, and chaos. And you know, one of the things that God is beginning to do right now is he's vindicating his people. We are in this time of such transition and, and exposure and wickedness and as you've seen all of these Hollywood is coming down let me tell you and that's all a bunch of witchcraft that's Babylon and we're going to talk about a lot of that stuff Tuesday but not today I want to talk about the final harvest and that's what the spirit put on today is the first day of fall or what we call I guess autumn this is where night and day are approximately equal, the hours. When a sun is crossing the celestial equator from the north to the south, <laughs> again, it's called the beginning of autumn or the beginning of fall. In this, we have the, what they call uh, the supermoon that has just passed. It was three days of a supermoon. It had a partial eclipse to it also. It's called the harvest moon. So there's no coincidence. Now, every 400 years is a cycle. There are certain cycles that God has. And, and in this, in 1632, I think it was 1623, yeah, 1623 was the first Thanksgiving. So 400-year cycle is completed. We are entering the first, first Thanksgiving of the new reality, refreshing reality. There's going to be a lot of things new. We're going to be entering, everything is going to be a first now that we, we've been celebrating. Now, the feasts haven't been fulfilled, but God is doing something with the feasts, big time. We have the next three feasts coming up this uh, coming month in October. Hallelujah. Would you turn to the book of Joel? The book of Joel, final harvest, it's begun. Don't get me wrong, there's always a harvest. The Bible said that there's a... Uh, a sowing of a seed and harvest. And there's seasons for that. 
And everything comes to an end, doesn't it? There's a beginning and there's an end. Everything comes to an end to start something new. In Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I also will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there. On account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. They have cast lots for my people. Have given a boy as a payment for a harlot. Now think about that. And sold a girl for wine. That they may drink. That, that's what's all being exposed now, isn't it? What's his name? Diddy or Pity or whatever? Diddy? Yeah. Him and his crew. All of them. Let me see. JC. Is that what is it? J? Jay-Z? He's on the run. These guys are hiding. People are, are, are resigning from their positions, and especially in all the music industry, movie industry. You kidding? They've been snagged, and they can't escape the hand of God. It's not the hand of the, lo of the law. It's the hand of God. Verse 4. Indeed, what you have to do with me, O Tyra and Sidon and all the coast of Philistia, will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold, and you have carried it into your temples, my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem you have sold to the Greeks, that you may remove them far from their borders. Behold, I will raise them out of the place to which you have sold them. And I will return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah. And I will sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for what? Prepare for what? That's a spiritual fight. Wake up the mighty men. Let all men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Cause your mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be awakened <laughs> and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit as to judge all surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is what? Ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full of vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark, and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. <laughs> then Jerusalem shall be what? Shall be holy, and no alien shall ever pass through her again. We are grafted into Israel with promises of covenant. The greatest Harvest begins more than ever. There will be more rest. There will be more rescues of salvation. And there will be more death will increase. Does everybody get it? There will be more. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. What's it say? Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, 
but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Why? For the greatest harvest. There's not enough laborers. True laborers, faithful laborers. We have a lot of part-time laborers. Matthew 13, 24. And another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then is it his tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. His servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said to them, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. Oh, snap. Until the what? Harvest. And at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares. And bind them in the bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Was he gathering first the wicked? Does everybody see that? That's what you're seeing all over the world. It's just, listen, this is just starting to ripple effect. It's going to get more and more and more. Politicians you are going to be see getting arrested. People that are treasonous. All those that interfered with uh, um, the presidential elections. All those that attempted assassination to Trump, all those FBI, all the CIA, all the DEA, all these corrupt Department of Justice, wait, especially the Internal Revenue Service. How about the Pentagon, the White House, the Capitol, the Senate, and Congress? All of them, they're going to be accountable this year. This year. Many of them are dropping out. Many of them are fleeing. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where they go. Because the court is not of this, just this country. It's the global court of God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. I want to go to verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the terrace of the field. And he answered and said to him, hmm, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who has sown them is, Eve, is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. And the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those that practice lawlessness. And I will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. And he called out of my hearing with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and and had a writer's inkhorn on his side. Then they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on their foreheads. Of the men who sigh and cry over the abominations that are done within it. In other words, what was God doing? Sealing off his intercessors. Those who are weeping and crying. 
they realize the abominations of what's been going on. They've been praying for divine intervention to destroy such wickedness. To the others, he said in my hearing, go after them, after them, through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women. But do not come near anyone whom, who is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. <laughs> so they began with the elders who were before the temple. Let me share something with you. There are pastors that are going to be exposed and ministers that are going to be exposed in the entanglements with this perversion organization. They've already been exposed already. I'm not going to mention any names yet until they're convicted. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were killing them, I was left alone. And I fell on my face and cried out and said, oh, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in the pouring out of your fury on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. And the land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the land, and the Lord does not see. It's almost like here, isn't it? You know, the fear of God has been disappeared. don't realize it. They're out there cross-dressing, mocking God, doing all kinds of stuff, with no reverence or fear that God is going to judge them. They have no idea. And as for me also, my eye will neither spare nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Just then the man clothed with linen, who had the inkhorn on his side, reported back and said, I have done as you commanded. <laughs> wow. Sealed to protect during the greatest harvest gathering. But he's going to gather the wicked, isn't he? Let me tell you, you're going to see a lot of people that you thought were right and good. They're going to either go home or they're going to be exposed and dismantled. If they don't repent. Repentance is the key. Hebrews chapter 12, 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now hmm, he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. This shaking is bringing chaos. Now, let me share something with you what chaos brings. It brings a harvest of souls. Why? Because it causes repentance for some. It brings the blessings of God. This is what chaos does. <laughs> and it brings a return to divine order. Three things. Harvest of soul, blessings of God, and divine order. So 2024 is really Not only is starting to the largest of harvest, but it's the greatest breakthroughs. The greatest breakthroughs you're going to see. Many people will be terrible, but for many of us it will be glorious. Because you're going to have the, the chaos and blessings. <laughs> But won't, we won't be stuck under the chaos. We'll be available for those who've been caught up in the chaos. Amen? To be available to bless them. Psalm 37, starting at 1.
I found this psalm to be extremely excellent for this time. Do not fret because of what? Evildoers. Nor be envious of workers of what? Iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil duels will be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are upright in conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord like the splendor of the metals shall vanish, into smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have seen the righteous for, not have seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is forever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he's judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. He shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power. And spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man, and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace. But the transgressor shall be destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all righteousness and unjust, unrighteous, I mean ungodliness and un, unrighteousness of men. Who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Is the truth being suppressed everywhere? Yeah. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world is invisible, attributes are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even as eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without what? Excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. 
nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and foolish in their, were dark, their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves a penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up over to a debased mind. To do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Wow. Those who approve them, those who supported them. Listen, you don't think that... Uh, all of these individuals that are so prideful and greedy flaunt themselves all over the place. The Cardassians. You don't think that they're going to get bombed out? <laughs> they're going to get arrested and imprisoned. They are all associated with the same organization of perversion and corruption. And there are many families out there associated with them. Look at all these teachers that are promoting Lies and deceit, doctrines of demons. They've infiltrated the school systems and education and professors. Look at the colleges. Look at these doctors that are gone bonkers. Even these attorneys, judges and generals and stuff like that. All over. Anyway, all these people that hold seats and positions of authority will be exposed, will be arrested, and will be imprisoned. Or will be killed. One or the other. Romans chapter 8. But you know what? It's going to create a great harvest. Romans 8.18. You know what? You got to think about this. How many people are awakening now after they've just seen all of their cohorts being busted and they're shaking in their boots now in fact they probably sold them they're selling everything they can now they're trying to escape but they can't nobody escapes the corruption what you sow is what you reap <laughs> Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, and I really believe it's coming big time. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in it. Hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Why does one still hope for what he sees? 
But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray, but as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions with us with groanings that cannot be understood or uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together to the good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. That's phenomenal. <laughs> so we see here that we're the wheat. Amen? The evil's the, the, evil's the tares. In second, Tim, in second Peter chapter two. We're gonna in this transition of this holy shift, things are gonna explode tremendously. People are gonna see. And the fear of God is gonna reach a global level like never before. Second Peter chapter two, uh, chapter two and verse twelve. But these like what? Natural brute beasts made to be caught. Did they get caught? Amen. They're getting more and more. We're going to get caught and destroyed. Speak evil of things they do not understand, and they will utterly perish in their own corruption. And will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots, blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are cursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, found the way of Balaam, the son of Bar. Who loved the wages of righteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by what? Temp tempest, for the whom is reserved the blackness of darkness. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty or freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they had escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they again entangle in them the, uh, and overcome, the latter end is what? Worse than the beginning. For if they had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, and then having it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soy, having washed to her home welling in mire. And I'm going to close at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. But I do not want you to be an idiot. Or ignorant. <laughs> Brethren. <laughs> Concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring them with it, uh, bring with him those who sleep in heaven and Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are what? Asleep. See, God calls them asleep because they ain't dead. They're more alive now than they've ever been. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain 
shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That's our final gathering. The dead in Christ and, the, and those alive in Christ will be gathered together and brought home. And we're going to party for three and a half years. And then come back and kick butt. Glory to God. Lord, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word and, and your preparing us. Knowing that chaos is coming. But in your chaos is harvest, blessings, and divine order. And we thank you. Because you predestined us to be in your image and likeness. You predestined us to know these things at this time. It's not about age. It's not about whether we're healthy or unhealthy. It's not about race or color or anything else. It's about truth. Truth. Anybody can carry the truth. And you're anointed us, no matter where we are, to carry the truth. So, Father, in this final harvest, keep us awake and ready. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.